Oh, Darren Ralph here, Ralphie Customs. Another mixed bag. Uh, let's see how we get on. First job is this, this is the starter bolt, so it goes down the starter shaft on big blue and the threads got munted, it come loose and got fucked up. I've cleaned the threads, um, but I'm not 100% that it's as good as it could be, so we have uh, a donor bolt here that we're going to transform, we're going to cut it down and we're going to machine it and cut the thread on it, so we're going to make one out of that like. And just to share a little off camera action. This is going out today, this box of bits. Um, it's our Chris's, bless him. And he bought these handlebars off me a while ago and had them painted. These ones are moving. But he didn't realize that I don't put dimples in the bars, so he'd not got something to run his wires through. So he bought them back for me. And using the power of heat, hammers and formers we've knocked a dent in like we've put a recess in there so it echoes the standard harley wire out dimple things to get around your switch gear i'd be tempted to file out the switch gear myself then you can have any handlebars you want but there you go um and we also changed the ends we pressed out the old ends they weren't matching you see i can't show you because i can't open the fucking box but i can bear with it Come on, there you go. We pressed out the ends of these shockers and fitted his old ends in for him because the shock, the ends that came with these shockers didn't match um, his fitment like. So, so that's that. We pressed them out and put them in. So, using the old one as a guide, I can use my hacksaw to cut this one down to length. I do like using my hacksaw. I've just put a new blade in a few cuts ago and it cuts extra smooth. So. And now we'll take that over to the lathe. So we're over on the antique atlas because it'll hold this nice, isn't it? <laughs> It's not a precision job by any means. Well, we'll just face the end of that up a little more, like so. And what I need to do is mark off the length of the existing thread. So if we want to echo this thread, then we're going to cut the thread down to the end of that black mark. We'll take the end of that black mark off and we'll be there. Now, this is oversized by quite a bit. So, not quite a bit, by a good few thou like. So, what I'll do is, um, let's see how we're going with this. Oh, wrong way. I'll take a, a clean up pass and then we'll measure the size as always. So we want to be down to there. So, yeah. Now we'll bring that back out and have a measure and see where we're at. Come on. See it cutting as it comes back out to the deflection because it is it's old and not the heaviest. You know, it's a little thing, another little thing. Right. right. That is 236,000 and we want it to be uh, 185,000 for the uh, 10 by 32 thread. So we'll zero it at that and we can see that we need 
to take 47th hour off. Uh, just over a millimetre, so let's we'll round this up. Oh. We'll take a few passes and work our way down to that size. You can join me once we get down to there. Right. Quick clean up, and we're there. So it's not a fluff off. I don't pop all. So, I don't need that. I'll have that out of the way. Put a good chamfer on the end. A bit more. Happy days. And get set up with a tap. Right, oh, so with that machined to size. We can look at getting a start with a die. So I'm going to use the tail stock to keep it square and the cross slide carriage to stop it turning. And we'll apply a little bit of pressure whilst we turn the job light, hopefully. This will start. It's a very fine thread. And all I'm looking to do really is get it nicely started for myself. So I think we have. Now what I'll do is I'll have this out and uh, we'll go over to a vice and finish it off in the vice line. Now we'll come in with a bit of the old fucking transport calf brown sauce and we're just going to work this round and then back to break the chip until we get down to that shoulder which won't take very long really even though it's quite a fine thread like you know we'll soon get there and then we'll go and see how it fits in the bike right so if i've done my job properly this shaft will now go in there, look. And see, this washer's got a tab poking on. It's got to focus. Focus. Yeah. Fuck off. Focus. Anyway, it's got a tab sticking up. And that goes in a little cutout. And then that goes through and into the job. That don't feel right to me. That fucking tabby washer's not the right one, hold on, and that's not the right spanner, let me bear with. Right, I'm back, so I've just enlarged the hole in the middle of this tabby washer so that it works right, so that it sits where it should and don't bite the bolt, don't bind on the bolt, fucking get that back in the slot there, look. it's still a bit tight, I've got the right spanner as well this fucking time, which really helps. Uh, this should just wind in like I'm just hoping that this top washer fits into that bearing, I don't think it's fucking gonna so it might end up lock tight in it because that ain't gonna fucking work I know that ain't gonna work there's a bearing goes on the end of this shaft and that tab washer's, is, well it's a bushing like in the end of that, and that tab washer's got to fit in it and it fucking won't, so. What do you fucking do? I don't really want to machine that down. Because he's got his tab sticking out, it's going to be a right pain in the ass to do. Yeah. Right, bear with it, I'll come back again. Right. <coughs> Third time's a fucking charm. <laughs> we have reworked that uh, washer. To make it smaller, I'm not sure. It's gonna be fucking quite right. To be fair, like, let's have a fucking look. Hmm. Yeah, nearly there. Right, so now if this will focus, you'll see 
the washer is smaller than the end of this fucking shaft and I've got my tab bit that will bend over and hold the nut in, the, the head in place and you've got this tabby bit that goes into a recess and I was the washer in place so if I line that up properly which is there this should go in just fucking jiggly wiggle it and I'll give this <coughs> Get this fucking screwed in the end line with a new thread. What we made. You always move a bit, and if you try and tighten them up too much, you end up just turning the fucking starter motor, which is not, that's what's happening there. So, what you need to do is get some of it in there against them T slot, and jam up the gear, and that will give you a few more turns of the spanner light just to snug up that wash off. Which is what I'm going to do. Bear in mind it's quite a fine thread. Um, so you don't want to rip it up like the old one was. I think we're going to be about there. So somewhere about there. We'll turn this and see if we're on a flat with this. Which we're not. So we'll give it another another turn like. Hold on. So there. And then we need to fucking squash that over. I'm not going to tap that over because I don't want to put undue force on it. I'll get a pair of pipe grips on there and do that end like off camera. Not off camera, on camera. Look, there I am doing it. Look, so set that up and squash that down. And now that can't undo. So it's not super tight, which it don't need to be, but it can't undo. So. The next thing is get his bearing back on his support and support for the starter back in place fucking there we go just get that screw in so we'll get these up tight and then back you out and give it a crank of a light to make sure that it's starting uh, I need to get it warmed up anyway because I'm taking it for MOT in the next half hour or so, so. Come on. Ooh, that's it. getting all excited look I'm popping out I'll continue to join the back seat and this one and then as I say we can spin it over so just bear with try Click. Right, bear with. Right, oh. so we are two clicks from full choke, couple of squirts, clutch in just in case. Cool. Well, the starter work. Anyway, the starter works, everything's caught, I can clear all my kits away, uh, and I'll get it fired up and take it for a MOT off camera. Right now, as I'm sure you can hear, I managed to get it fired up, and now I'm going to jump on it and take it for a test ride and for MOT. Happy day. Oh, right, right, fucking hell. <coughs> right now, try again. Yeah, there you go. So we're back from MOT and everything's fucking cool. Everything's fucking small. So on, run. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Happy fucking days.
bit of stale petrol and flooding. So we get the spark plugs are proper clean. <coughs> Put some fresh juice in it. Give it a fucking quick thrash into town. I didn't thrash it. A quick run into town and back. And uh, we're happy days. Another di new day dawns. Fucking hell. We're going to get this engine onto that bench with that engine on waste. So, I've also, I don't know if they'll appear on film, or he will appear on film. My old milling machine's off. Guy coming from Cornwall, which is about five hours away from me. Should be here before lunchtime, so we'll see that off. Out with the old, in with the new. Get this ready to make a frame up next week. You'll see me making a frame, and it's off with big blue. So that's all road ready. Well, it's all ticketed light, you know. I don't know if our Dean wants to go over it and make sure everything's call everything small himself which I probably would but seems good to me it's nice on the test ride clutch is a bit uh, grabber when you first pull off but I think that's just because it's been all to bits like it needs settling in but it's fine hey right one last thing on big blue the MOT inspector I've quite rightly pointed out that this caliper's running tight to the disc. I think I mentioned it in a previous segment. So I've took it off and there's a little spacer behind each one. I'm gonna look for a thin shim that I can add to that spacing. Um, I've just had the caliper off. I'm gonna pry the pads apart. Like I can push the pistons back with my pry bar and then uh, fit it with a little more space in there. Now thread's not the fucking best as well. But Put a bit of lock tight on it, it's, it should be weak. So, you may see, I can't really get my finger in, but uh, there's now a tiny stainless shim on top of that thicker spacer, and the smallest of clearances between the disc and the caliper hanger. So, that's all fucking good. Happy days. Hey, right, oh, so focus. Here we go. One triumph engine. Offered up to the gods. Let's fucking have it spinning around, baby. And fucking get it into the workshop area. Nice and steady. Fucking heavy as fuck, these motors. I've got a strap around the front there, but it's only a fucking bit of insurance. So we'll get this over onto the bench. I need to move that rubber matting out of the way before I roll on it. So, onto the bench we go. Now, that oil cooler that's getting in the way is not going to be used, so I'm going to crimp cut the lines, which means I'll use whew, my croppers to fucking chop through these lines. Look, we're going to somewhere here so they're not in my way when I'm building the bike up, and... These get in the fucking way and they're hard to undo. I might just slice through them. Sorry, I'm not showing you very well. These plastic mountain things are for something that we're not using. So on the other side, yeah. That's the one, you can't get to it with a water pipe. So that water pipe needs to come off. That bracket needs to come off. It looks like someone's had the fucking water pump off already. I'm not planning on doing that. Might have to put a bolt or two in there, like. Unless it's fucking... Don't know. Don't know what he's done there, like, but I'm not doing it, so... Oh, I need this water pipe off, that bracket off, the oil cooler off, and the other bracket off before we can put this into situ. But I'll lay it down on the bench, and we'll go from there. Right, with that done, with that down there and over yonder, uh, I'm going to take some measurements, get his, uh, get his yokes back on. His forks and shit, take some measurements and take some measurements off mine, look. Just to see the lay of the land. Hey. 
That's what I'm talking about. Sorry, the bastard. I need to get these out of the way because I've got to get a forklift through this fucking in here. These, me three fucking babies, need fucking off down that end. Out of the way, like, so I can get a forklift in here without much fucking trouble. Whenever he gets here, bless him. <coughs> here, look, look. So we've had them off, look. We've done the crimp pen. It ain't quite fucking sealed them. I'll knock them up with a hammer and dolly or something. A bit old to be playing with dollies, right? Um, and I've had one of these out with a rattle gun. The old Ryobi. But this one's a solid one, so we're going to hammer and chisel. Not, we're not going to chop it off with the hammer and chisel. Don't be so fucking crude. We're going to knock it round. We're going to get a bite on it and then spin it with the hammer and chisel. So... That's next. Right, you stay there, try not to fall over. Then I'll fucking see what happens with this. So we get a start on it. Alright, right, so we bite into the side of it and then we angle the chisel a bit and crack it off. Crack one off for where this is. Now, if I'm right, it should wet out. If I use the right fucking tool. Talks forty, Ralph. Talks forty. There we go. And then they're blind dolls, like the only mounting, the only mounting points. But we'll just tickle them back in nice and gently. And that's got this side cleaned off. With everything out of the way. Now we'll try knocking the fucking. Just trying to flatten the ends of these fucking oil lines. Well, of course, I'm just... They're weeping a bit, they're not happy. They're like, <laughs> and we don't want oil all over the fucking bend. So... They won't weep forever, like. There ain't a lot of oil that can come out of them. Um, and then I'm going to spin this round. And you can't really see now. But uh, this pipe's in the fucking way of this bracket and this pipe's going to be in the way of the frame so I need to get a 10 mil job on it and take this pipe off and then do this, undo them like I've just done the other side. So I can see the oil pump bolts are out, a uh, water pump, sorry, bolts are out and I'm not sure why he's done that. But not my brief, is it? I ain't got, I ain't got to fucking get running. So we've got a rubber hose here, look, you can't see. I'm going to get that off and I'm going to take this pipe off and I'm going to take our bracket off. And then the engine is jig ready. Happy days. Right, we're almost there, look. We've got the motor about where it's going to be in relation to the headstock. We've got the headstock at the right angle for the dangle, 35 degrees comes through to the level here, which will be the bottom of the frame, and gives us six and a half inch ground clearance at the front. We've moved this into place, which is 25 inches from the sprocket to where this sprocket is gonna be, which is a nice length, you know, it's the length of mine. So I've not got a standard swing arm to go off like. So we've gone for the length of mine. Happily, happily I have one, one I prepared earlier. Um, and now we just need to come up six and a half off this bench for the axle that'll give us six inches clearance at the back so i'm guessing it's that old but i might be wrong i'll have a measure uh, what we need to do is make spaces up to hold these bad boys in place that one goes that way to hold these bad boys in place um and go from there so i need to find an old that's six and a half inches up and then we need to space this out to whatever the wheel is Plus a bit, because you always pull in a bit like. So plus about five mil, I like. I think there's a 270, but I might be wrong. I'll have a look on the, I've just written it down like. So we want 270 less that, which is 60. So that's 110. Uh, sorry, 60, 270, 210, 105 each. And we've got fuck all up. We've got 85s. We've got hundreds, but we ain't got no 105s. Uh, we might have these with the five mil, but I don't think they'll fit in there. So they do, don't they? Yeah, well, I'll work it. I'll sort it. I might do some of these. I really like these made out of old fucking fork tubes. I might cut a couple off and machine them 
to uh, the necessary. Right, I've not got one of these. I've got 19s. I don't know why I've not got 20s. I should have 20s, but I've fucking looked everywhere. I ain't got any. So I need to make some, some of these 20. 20 mil on the skinny bit, 35 on the fat bit, 10 mil long and 7 mil long. We're in half inch hole in, or 12, 12 mil clearance light, so. Yeah. So it's over to the lathe. Woohoo! Hello, let's get this fucking party started. So, let's, hold on. Set me feed, there we go. Right, have a clean up and then we'll size it. Uh, the 35 OD is not crucial. Uh, I'm guessing my DRO was set right for this job, for this tooling, but it's a big guess, you know. Let's have a look, see what we're at, where we're at even. This is a nice bit of leaded. So, EN3B or whatever it is, EM1A. Leaded, so it machines beautifully. Check the size on it. And we have got at that 35, so yeah, my DRO's bang on. Right, happy days. So, we can come in on the end here, look. And face it up. It's already got a centre been started and as a machine the face it looks pretty central so we'll keep it at that and now we want what do we want 20 mil so from 35 we're gonna go 32 so we'll take three mil off 60 thou depth of cut and we'll go along 10 mil, which is coming up now. There we go, 10 mil. Now we can go more than that, can't we? That uh, three mils, we can easily outdo that. So we'll go 28, which is four mil. And so on and so forth. Um, you can join me when I get nearer to the finished size. This should be just under 20, 19.97, my readout saying. So we'll go down to that shoulder. There, wind that out. Have this away. And break those edges, look. Like that. Happy days. I know. Then we'll come in with our centre drill. like so uh, because we're a free machine in steel I'm going to go straight in with the side just slowed it down a bit and just zero in this off so bet mind the chatter or don't mind the chatter and I want each one's 20 mil with a cut like 7 mil flange 10 mil fucking skinny bit and the uh, potting off tool is 3 mil, so that's 10 mil. So I need a 40 mil depth of cut. I need to go 40 mil deep with this bit like. So, away I go. I know. So, that's gone. Nice big space where that used to be. I didn't film anything because there weren't that much. You know, you're going to see me struggle to operate a forklift safely, and that's not always good to go out there. No, we're fine. Honestly, we're fine. And uh, I can now put that back there where it belongs. Let me jerry can and we have the accoutrement. I can park the girls up back down this end. So uh, we're ready to take Big Blue out tomorrow morning. And me Yamaha uh, FJ1200 should be going out in the morning as well. I've just had a really nice chat message me and uh, we have done a deal subject to fucking completion like we see if he turns up tomorrow with the uh, with the reddies then that'll be going out so that's a win-win that's fucking great 
and a bit of space back light. And in the meantime, <laughs> we were here, weren't we? Hey, we were machining this out before Matey came, so let me get my shit back together and then we'll carry on machining these bosses up ready for next week's frame job. So there you go. Uh, I don't know if it comes across in this video. I'll have a look when I've edited it, but that is a few days in the life of a custom bike builder fucking about and doing a little bit of this and that as it arises and sorting things out on the oof. So uh, one job's going out, one machine's going out, maybe another bike's going out. We're starting on the frame over there next week. Um, and if you'd like to see that, consider giving me a sub and please give me a thumbs up. It makes a huge difference. Check out memberships and merchandise and all of the good stuff, including my friends in the description below. And I'll see you on the next one. See you next week, everyone. Have a great one.